We're in Washington, D.C. at the United States Navy Memorial on Pennsylvania Avenue, right between the Capitol and the White House, for the first day of issue dedication ceremony of the Distinguished Sailors 44 Cent Commemorative First Class Stamps. The stamps pay tribute to four sailors who served with courage and distinction during the 20th century. William S. Sims, Arlie A. Burke, John McCloy, and Dory Miller. My name is Peter Wynn, and I am a great nephew of John McCloy. He and his wife, Aunt Sally, didn't have any children, so we were kind of his children, my brothers and sisters and I. And uh, we lived in the same town of Leonia, New Jersey. And what I remember most about Uncle John was that he was a, a wonderful rose gardener. And all summer long, when I would go down to his house and I would uh, help him in his rose garden. I'd pick the Japanese beetles off his rose bushes and he'd pay me a penny for a whole canful. That was, you know, good money back in 1944. And uh, he was a lovely, lovely uh, gentleman, although they tell me as a, uh, a warrior he was something else because he won two Congressional Medals of Honor and a Navy Cross, which is sort of a, a record. I don't know of anyone else who has that many of the uh, Valor Medals that he had. And um, I'll tell you one story that's kind of interesting. He literally saved my life. In the uh, early 1940s, I fell ill with a, uh, a blood infection and had a colossal fever, something like 108 degrees. And my family was told that if I had the bad luck to survive, I was going to be simply a vegetable. And John wouldn't believe them, and he nursed me through this illness in the hospital. They told him that he couldn't do this, that this was against the rules. And he told them, well, uh, who do you, uh, which one of you is going to take it upon himself to throw me out? And he literally stayed with me for days and days and nights on end, putting cold compresses on me, and uh, I survived. And this, when I say my family figured I was a goner, they actually made funeral arrangements and bought a coffin. And John didn't accept any of this and nursed me through. So I'm here today to honor him, but also because if he hadn't done what he did, I wouldn't be here to, to do it. Some of his accomplishments, well, in the Boxer Rebellion in 1902, he won a Congressional Medal of Honor. And then in the assault on Veracruz in 1914, he won a second Medal of Honor. What he did there, I'm not sure exactly what he did in the Boxer Rebellion. It's a little unclear to me. But in uh, the assault on Veracruz in 1914, he drew the fire of the Mexican forces so that the Marines were able to flank uh, the, the Mexicans and come ashore. Then after the, sec after the First World War, he was a commander of a minesweeper that swept the mines out of the North Sea. It was called the North Sea Mine Barrage. And uh, very, very few of the command or anybody from those ships came back because it was a very, very dangerous job. And he managed to do his job and live and died a peaceful death at home at the age of 69. He was pretty brave. <laughs> <laughs> or not. He... Um his mother died when he was young. She drowned in the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. And then they came to New York City, and then he joined the Merchant Marine. As a, well, he worked on boats from the time he was 12 years old. And then when he was 15, he joined the Merchant Marines, and then went on to the Navy. We're with Rod Sterling, who knew uh, John McCloy. Could you share some of your stories? Uh, yeah, John McCloy was, uh, as an elderly man, he lived next door to uh, my family in Leonia, New Jersey. We lived next door to him from uh, 1943 until his death in 1945. Uh, I often would uh, visit with him as a small boy. I think he liked the company of children. And I suppose as a brazen little kid asking a lot of questions, one day he took me by the hand and brought me into the house and showed me uh, his uh, medals from the Navy. And he told me uh, that uh, two of them were uh, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, I had kind of forgotten it, uh, and, and I was, it was brought back to mind while I, was, uh, while I was under Valium going through a medical procedure about three years ago. And at first I thought it was a dream. And, but then I never remembered dreams, so I kind of concluded it must be a recollection. And I went on the internet, and sure enough, uh, he did it. So I began kind of a mission to get Brewster, New York, where he was born, and Leonia, New Jersey, where he died, to uh, erect some sort of a memorial. And uh, they have both done so at this point in time. Uh, and this was a surprise that I only found out about the leak, about the stamp being dedicated to him. 
Uh, that uh, I just got an email uh, from uh, Mr. Saunders here uh, just uh, a week ago. Customers have until April 6, 2010 to obtain first day of issue postmarks. Place the distinguished sailor stamps on envelopes addressed to yourself or other recipients. Place them in a larger envelope addressed to Distinguished Sailor's Stamps Special Cancellations, P.O. Box 92282, Washington, D.C. 20090-2282. After applying the first day of issue postmark, the Postal Service will return the envelopes through the mail. There is no charge for the postmark.